Exactly how strong is Omni-Man compared to other heroes and villains? Welcome to Trick Theory, as we whip out my scientist background to once again overanalyze the power of a fictional character. One that can literally shatter anything into powder with his bare hands. Thousands of years ago, Noel An was born on the distant planet Viltrum, with Viltrum being a play on the word Filtrum or the upper lip, as all male Viltrumites have mustaches. And much like Saiyans were a planet of imperialistic supermen who, after becoming the most powerful empire in the galaxy, decided they should be the only empire in the galaxy. And thus, system by system, planet by planet, the Viltrumites use their insane strength, flight, and ability to literally hold their breath for two weeks straight to fly around space, conquering slash genociding everything in their path if a planet was to ever refuse. By the time Noel An joined the Viltrumite military at a young age, the Viltrumites had already conquered nearly 70% of the known galaxy. But there was one problem. There weren't actually that many Viltrumites to go around. Their army had been spread dangerously thin over thousands of conquered planets. And as powerful as Viltrumites are, they do have many weaknesses. You see, years prior, the Viltrumites, with their Earth-sized planet, became embroiled in a bloody civil war that Noel An only described as the strong removing the weak from our society. And thus the Earth proportion population of 6 to 8 billion Viltrumites was cut down to 3. 3 billion supermen and women that were just spread out too thin to account for the increasing number of planets there were for them to beat into submission. So the Empire, for the first time ever, put a pause on their expansion and came up with a new tactic. To send each of their most trusted officers to a planet for a pro long period of time, say 20 years, as they pretended to be that planet's champion, both gaining the people's trust and internally weakening the planet to prepare them for immediate occupation without any fighting needed. So Noel An, quickly renaming himself with the Earth name Nolan Grayson and taking up the job of a writer, he followed the lead of the other heroes or champions he saw around him, giving himself the hero name Superman, which was quickly dropped and changed to Omni-Man. And then something interesting happened. Happened. Nolan married an Earth woman and had a son named Mark, who eventually gained all of his powers, telling him the lie that he was sent by a World Betterment Committee until he eventually told Mark the truth. And after a very one-sided battle, Nolan left the planet, unable to bring himself to kill his own son. When it comes to his powers, Omni-Man has what is called dominant genetics. Not just in the case that his DNA gives him some pretty strong powers, but in the fact that whenever his genes are mixed with another's to create a new individual, his genes will always be the ones to be expressed or otherwise dominant in that new individual, while the genes from the other parent remain recessive, even causing his offspring to look much more like him. Omni-Man's powers include his ability to fly, and as he explains to his son Mark, he can seemingly create leverage from nothing. But just like Superman, this ability may actually be thanks to them being able to manipulate manipulate the strongest of the four elemental forces being electromagnetism. You see, by creating a sort of bioelectric aura around themselves, that in instances we see extending to say the ice particles floating around Superman before he takes off, they can cause themselves to float. On a basic level, this bioelectric aura can be thought to work similar to magnets. As you likely know, when it comes to magnets, opposite charges attract and like charges repel. So similar to the magnets that are now being used on floating maglev trains, the train, or in this case a person, can not only float but adjust and balance themselves, as they shoot themselves forward by making the front of themselves attracted to the spectrum in front of them, as their back ends are opposed to the spectrum behind them. With Omni-Man being able to basically sense this field and then adjust himself to move or will himself through it. And he eventually explains this scientific stretch to Mark as like tensing a muscle to move themselves faster and then relaxing that same muscle to slow down. But way more cool is beyond flight, we know that Viltrumites, regardless of where they find themselves or the color of the sun nearest them, are born with super strength, being able to easily lift trucks, buildings, and so much more. Omni-Man has been stated as being able to forcibly lift somewhere over 100 tons, or 200,000 pounds, which may be greatly lowballing what we actually see him do. As as 
in Season 1, we see Omni-Man casually tell Mark that he once diverted an asteroid heading for Earth that was the size of Texas. This would mean that this massive asteroid would be around 270,000 square miles, and assuming that the radius of this asteroid is roughly 500 kilometers, or half the width of Texas, we can find its volume to be 5.24 times 10 to the 20 liters. And using the good old formula of weight equals volume times density, we find its weight to be 2.6 trillion pounds, or 1.3 billion tons. That's over 9,000 Mount Kilimanjaro's if you're wondering. We also see Omni-Man playing catch with Mark, who casually sends the baseball flying across the planet for approximately 18 seconds. For this to happen, the baseball would have to cover the circumference of the Earth, or 24,901 miles. For the baseball to make it all the way around the Earth in 18 seconds means that Omni-Man would be throwing the baseball at a speed of 1,383,101.64 miles per second, or close to 5 billion miles an hour, which is about 7,409 times the speed of sound, or what would be called Mach 7,409. When it comes to Omni-Man's speed, we see him easily fighting a dragon in Taiwan, then a few minutes later stopping a flood in Egypt, with him then stopping home for dinner as he easily writes a couple of books in a day for his day job if he's given two keyboards to work with at once. He flies so fast that his neighbors only see a brief flash go by in the air, making them believe that they actually saw a ghost. In order for someone to look like they're a moving blur that only lasts for say one fourth or 0.25 seconds, means that Nolan would be at minimum moving somewhere along the lines of 900 miles an hour as he slows down into his home. But this is all rather effortless for Omni-Man, as he is easily able to do interstellar travel to places and planets far beyond what we here on Earth would even be aware of. With Nolan being said to be able to fly at speeds rivaling starships that can reach star systems 4 to 10 light years away within 2 weeks or less. To find Omni-Man's speed, let's take the upper end of this and say that on average, it takes Omni-Man 2 weeks to reach systems that are 10 light years away. When we say a light year, we mean how far light that moves at 186,000 miles a second, or close to 671 million miles an hour, can travel in just one Earth year. With the answer being that light can move at a near 6 trillion miles a year. So Omni-Man, at presumably near top speeds, takes two weeks to travel a distance of 60 trillion miles, or 10 light years, means that he would be moving at 266,239 times the speed of light, or 178.5 trillion miles an hour. Omni-Man is blessed with an incredibly tough invulnerability to most physical attacks that anyone could think to throw at him, including extreme heat and cold. And his stamina is high enough to let him wage a one-man war, crumpling an entire advanced civilization over the course of a year. But the one fact that caught my attention is that the Viltrumite brain is able to go for weeks on a single gulp of air, and even survive for periods without any oxygen if it needs to, as the individual spends another day looking for a new planet to land on without suffering any noticeable problems. Along with that, their bodies are said to be able to run for weeks at a time without food, water, or even rest. Which explains not only how Omni-Man gets around so easily, but also informs us on just how well put together and efficient their DNA and bodies are. And this sheds some light on perhaps Omni-Man's greatest advantage and power. While this episode finally got me to eyeball my old genetics textbook that's just gathering dust in the corner, Omni-Man's greatest power that is genetically passed down to any of his Viltrumite offspring is that while young, they appear to age normally, or sometimes whatever is normal for the recessive race they bred with, like Mark initially aging at the rate of a normal human. Only for Omni-Man to later tell him that as they age, Viltrumite's rate of aging actually continually slows down, allowing them to live for thousands of years on end. And as hard of a fact as this is,
gets for Mark to accept, it makes total sense. In Invincible, we see Mark, to his dad's dismay, not express any sort of powers at all until he was a senior in high school, or over 17 years old, when he suddenly sent a trash bag flying through the sky one night, and boom, suddenly he had all of his dad's Viltrumite powers. So this evidence, coupled with the fact that a Viltrumite slows down in the rate of aging only as they get older and older, all points to the fact that certain Viltrumite genes, outside of the ones that made Mark already look more like his dad than his mom, become what is called upregulated, or due to environmental factors, developmental changes, and other signals within the organism, certain genes, regardless if they're dominant or recessive, increase in their expression. Coincidentally, other genes, like the ones that come from the other species, then become downregulated. And in the case of Viltrumite DNA, their genes seem to be continually upregulated throughout their lifespan. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. As invincible as Omni-Man and his race try to make themselves appear, they are not invulnerable. As the US government figured out that as a race, they are incredibly vulnerable to high-pitched sound. And at one point prior, a virus known as the Scourge virus was released on the Viltrumites, wiping out 99.9% .9 of them, leaving only 50 left alive to rebuild the Empire. Which worked a heck of a lot better than Batman's plan to subdue Plastic Man, who is scary powerful, and even powerful enough to take down the likes of Omni-Man and Superman. Keep in mind though, it's just a clever trick. See you in the next one.